Inflammation is a process of the body's healing response. As we've discussed previously, inflammation has its benefits, but chronic inflammation contributes to everything from arthritis to breast cancer. In this clip, Dr. Ruth Bozinski interviews Dr. Norman Sheely about inflammation's role in the two biggest killers in our nation, heart disease and cancer. I'm Dr. Ruth Bozinski, a licensed psychologist in Connecticut and president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine. Our guest today is Dr. Norman Sheely. He is a physician and the founder of the American Holistic Medical Association. He's also the founding president of Holos University Graduate Seminary. He is the author, among other things, of Life Beyond 100, The Creation of Health, and um, 90 Days to Stress-Free Living. All illness is somehow involved with inflammation because it involves some kind of irritation or frank damage to the body itself. When I was studying pathology and looking at things under the microscope, I often found a confusion because every single illness, including cancers, had evidence of inflammatory processes that you could see under the microscope. So Mm -hmm. it is a foundation for all disruption of any kind of function, all disease is Mm -hmm. based upon inflammatory response. Whether it's an acute one, you get hit by an ax, or whether it's chronic and came on more slowly because of chemical, physical, emotional, or even electromagnetic es- uh-huh. excess. Uh-huh. And yet, Norm, could you, would it be accurate to say it, it also has a, a healing component in it? I well, mean, of I... course, because in, if, if the body is capable of stopping the inflammatory process, and we all have seen that many times, you get a cut on your finger, and as long as it doesn't become infected, it will heal very rapidly. Mm-hmm. That is the white blood cells moving in, taking care of any debris, any damaged tissue, and the body then heals itself spontaneously. Well, the same thing can take place any organ of the body if the body is overall healthy. Now we're thinking about inflammation not just as part of the healing process but also as... Um, something that happens in excess and therefore becomes part of the disease process? Do I have that right? You got it. And, and, you know, the most common, of course, disease is atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, causing heart attacks and strokes. So what's the connection, though, between inflammation and heart disease? Well, the inflammatory process is that that sets up the hardening of the arteries, which is deposits of cholesterol becoming calcified eventually. Mm. And it's an inflammatory process that starts it. And and as I said earlier, that inflammatory process can be the result of a chemical imbalance or quite commonly believed now to be the result of an infection. Um, The bacteria that causes peptic ulcer, for instance, Mm. can be one of the causes of an initial inflammatory process in the arteries of the heart. Let's go in a totally different direction and talk about cancer. Ah, well, that one is the most interesting of all, of course, because I have believed for 45 years that Mm -hmm. all cancer is the result of a viral infection. Well, just in the last six months, it is finally being recognized that malignant brain tumors very commonly are initiated by a viral infection. If you look at it under the microscope, it looks like what I call a raging infection. And there's certain breast cancers that act like an infection. They they progress so rapidly. So there's a degree of inflammatory response that occurs. You know, we adapt to a lot of things. We all carry certain viruses in our body. Like if you've ever had a fever blister, that came usually from your mother. And some people will have that flare up, you know, every month. Others, like me, have had fever blisters twice that I know in my entire life. Mm -hmm. And so we all have differences in our immune competency and how often these things come out. So if you have a tendency to viral infections, whether it's flu or colds or fever blisters or herpes, you Mm -hmm. are more susceptible potentially to the risk of developing cancer, and that's why it's so important to strengthen your immune system. There's 
there's more to learn about mind body insights into inflammation. For more information, visit our blog at www.nicabm.com slash NICABM blog, or attend a free teleseminar at www.nicabm.com slash teleseminar slash 2009. There you will learn how stress contributes to inflammation and disease, the role of environmental contaminants in the inflammatory response, mind-body approaches to reduce inflammation, and more. This December, NICABM will host its 21st International Psychology of Health, Immunity, and Disease Conference on the beautiful Hilton Head Island in South Carolina. Hundreds of practitioners will be coming from all over the United States and many parts of the world. Among the nearly 50 speakers, Dr. Sheely will be teaching a session on the foundations of neuroplasticity. There will be several sessions on related topics, including a comprehensive program to prevent and reduce inflammation, digestive wellness and the systemic consequences of imbalance, thyroid disorders, a holistic approach, and vitamin D3, key to a healthy brain and mind. To see more information about the upcoming conference and to sign up to attend and receive CE-CME credits, please visit www.nicabm.com.